Hi Floss Tube. this is Matt. Welcome back to my channel, NBC Stitcher. This is a video about cross stitch. This is episode number three. Today is Saturday, May 2nd, 2020. And I'm going to be covering three big categories this week. First up, I'm going to go over some of my old uh, finishes uh, that I've had from either in the last year or some of them are even several years old so um, they're just ones that I had I wanted to show them I haven't fully finished them and I'm not sure what I'm gonna do with them uh, and then I'm gonna go over my whips uh, that I worked in this last week including two of my mania projects one of them I'm working on today but I've already done some of it and then I have haul um, which is actually kind of big this week because it seemed like everything came in at the same time even though I didn't order a whole bunch last week it all just came at this time uh, but um, first of all I want to say thank you for everybody that's watched giving me comments and likes um, and everything on here and on Instagram um, I really appreciate it uh, I like the feedback and I like interacting with everybody um, in the comments and everything like that so keep them up um, I also want to thank everybody that subscribed I saw today I got to 100 subscribers I think I'm over that like 101 it was last time I looked at it um, before I started filming uh, but I am really excited about this uh, it's something that I wanted to do for a while and I'm happy that it's going well so I hope to keep doing it um, and um, yeah, so let's get into it. Okay, so first off, this is actually not a cross stitch project. This is a latch hook rug. This is one of the ones that I did um, when I, I think I was in, mostly when I was in high school, I think I did this. Um, I had a tendency to pretty much work on it during the summer um, and often while listening to audiobooks, um, which I still do when I cross stitch, but this is something um, that I enjoy doing. It's a Jaguar. Um, I think you, I don't know if you can still get them, but this was like a kit that you could get at Michael's or Hobby Lobby. Um, and it's funny, sometimes you remember like the things that you were doing when you did this. Um, I remember listening to the Lord of the Rings uh, books um, on audiobook. Uh, while this while I was doing this so I'm pretty sure it was high school because those I listened to them around the time the movies came out um, and so yeah um, and then my mom finished it by putting um, something around the back or around the edge to um, so I can use it as a rug uh, but it gets a lot of dog hair in my house uh, because my dog that sheds a lot but um, so I'm not sure where I'm gonna put it um, I haven't I don't have it on the floor at the moment and at, the, at this time um, next I want to show okay so this is probably when I picked stitching back up in college this was the piece that I did this is I, my MAI um, by dimensions it's a petite gold collection I think um, I think you can still get this I've seen it but sometimes it's harder to find um, but this was I bought this it's like oh it's not that big I'll, I'll do that and I'll um, finish it and I'll give it to my friend that didn't happen uh, it didn't get finished till years later um, probably only in the last well it's been a little bit maybe 2013 maybe that summer I finished it I don't remember but um, this is one I, I really enjoyed this uh, it was the first time I did anything with uh, metallics um, when I you know used the Krynic or well not sure I think it's Krynic um, you know to do the back stitching with it um, but this is one of a series of several um, smaller geisha and there's two geisha and a samurai that I've done. I don't think I haven't finished the little samurai either, but um, there's those three of them. Uh, but I've liked this. Um, I think I may put them in a little picture frame. Um, I did pick some up, two picture frames that are like the same size that would work for this at a garage sale last year, uh, but I haven't 
taking the time to actually put them on something and try and frame them up. But we'll see. Um, I may just go back under the bed. Uh, but this uh, this one is a companion to that one. Um, this is I don't remember her name, but um, it's another um, same dimensions kit. Uh, little kits. I think I've seen this one too. Um, I did, there is supposed to be more backs or half stitches that goes around the top here to kind of give it a little bit more effect, but I didn't think it really needed it and I didn't want to do it, so I didn't do it. Um, but I did do some of the kind of that. But I also liked this. This is the first time, this is a like specialty stitch. I don't remember what it's called, but you like wind your th thread around the needle quite a bit and then kind of make it into like this coil looking thing. Um, you do like three different ones for her little bun here, um, or part of her hair, which is really nice. Um, I enjoyed doing that. I don't do a whole lot of specialty stitches. I mean, I do it if it's called for, but it's not something I seek out to do a lot of, but um, there's that one. And this one I did, I finished, in the 2013, the summer of 2013, I, I was one of the times where I picked it back up and was doing it a lot. Um, so this is a, um, I think it's, it's not called Peacock, but it obviously is a Peacock. Uh, but it's another Dimensions kit, and I did this one. Um, also has, um, you know, the metallic in it and all that. So I enjoyed doing, using this, uh, or doing this, uh, but it's also one that I'd like to do something with. Um, and I think these are all on 18 count Ada. It's whatever came in the kit. It wasn't something that I did. Um, so then in 2016, maybe, I picked back picked up my cross stitch again and the next group of things that I did was all um, I did a bunch of Pokemon I love video games and I loved playing Pokemon as a kid um, and I found a bunch of Pokemon patterns that people had just posted online um, and so I put some of them together so this is one that I did um, those are several different Pokemon from the second generation of games, um, which is gold and silver. Uh, these are three of the legendary dogs that you, they're kind of like, you get a, maybe you, you have to try really hard to catch them. Um, it's very difficult in the game, but um, it's a, these were some of the, the um, Actually, Dratini's not from Generation 2. He's from Generation 1. But these are some of the Pokemon that I liked the most when I played the game. So I put them together. This was one of the first times I tried, like... I didn't chart it beforehand. I just put one in and then decided, okay, well, this one would be... I think I started with this one and then this one and then put him back and then tried to fit them in um, in that kind of way. But this is on... 14 count Ada, um, and it's just a red fabric. I bought it. That, um, I mean, it was Charles Craft, maybe, or maybe it was DMC. I don't know, but it was just red. It's 14 count, which is not something I like stitching on a whole lot just because this, it's, I like, well, these are pretty blocky. I don't know. Maybe I, I may have used three strands. Yeah, looks like I did. Looking at some of where I carried my thread. So I did three strands on every color, and that's why, which I like the way it looks, but that's a lot of floss, and I don't like doing that. So um, this is it. I don't know what I'll if I'll do anything with that, um, but um, after I did that one, then I did another one, and I also didn't really chart it out, but I did, um, I kind of played around with it beforehand to make sure it would all fit. But this is also a bunch of Pokemon. Um, if you know what, if you 
no Pokemon, you will probably recognize this. This is Eevee, which is a Pokemon that can evolve into different types of Pokemon, uh, depending on what you do with it when you're playing the game. And so I did it, um, all of his different evolutions uh, is basically, which I think is still correct. I don't know if there's been anything new added in the most recent games I have played. Um, but this is, um, so I like did this one first and then figured out where the other ones were. It's not perfect, it's not like super great, but um, I liked it. Um, these were all just, I found these patterns online and did it. I think this is not a 14 count. I did not use three strands. So I think this, maybe I found an 18 count. It may just be white. Yeah, it may just be 18, white 18 count. Um, or if it's a color, it's... No, I think it's a color. Maybe it was... I'm not sure what count, um, but maybe it's 16. Maybe it's not 18. But it's a... This was fun. Um, again, I have no idea what I'm going to do with it. Um, probably won't do much with it except look at it occasionally. Um, this next one, this is more recent. This was, I did this in the last year. This is the first time I stitched on any kind of linen. Um, I picked this up from my LNS when I went there the first time trying to find what kind of um, hand dyed fabrics they had or different things. Um, and I didn't ever stitched anything on linen or even weave. And this was what I, um, I just got a little scrap piece and wanted to try it out. So this is a little fox. Um, there's several, I, I did some um, baby hoop, not an, um, samplers or announcements, but they, they're just a little pattern with like a baby animal um, or something. It was a couple, some of my friends had babies in the last uh, year and so I made them that. But one of them, um, I bought a set of patterns that had uh, different kinds of animals, baby animals, and they really liked hedgehogs, so I did the hedgehog one. And this is a fox that came with it. I like foxes, so I did this one. It's the first time I ever did anything on linen. Over two. This is 28 count. Um, just like a white. I have no idea what it was called or who it was by or anything, but it was first time I did it, and I think it went pretty well. I, I enjoyed it. I, you know, the first time you do it, it's a little different counting because um, it's over two. Uh, I think sometimes it's easier for me to, when I'm, I've noticed working on both Ada and Linen that, uh, or even weave, um, which I mostly work on even weave actually, but uh, I've noticed that when I'm counting, it's easier for me to mess up if I am counting over two, uh, I'll be like off a half a stitch or it won't be right. Um, and it's easier for me to, if there's like a big space to find, to do that in Ada. Um, but so I typically stick to like close to wherever I'm working and then just kind of go out and don't just try to go do something different. Um, but, uh, and then the other one that I have is, um, just this little cactus. It's actually a bigger pattern that's got several different cactuses on it. And when I first was going to do it, I was, there's like nine of them and I could fit them all on here. And this is just an 18 count white Ada. Um, but I did one and then realized I was going to do them differently. Um, and so I can... Um, I ended up doing them on a different fabric and I just did a couple of them and I used them to give away as gifts at Christmas. Um, so this is just a little cactus, um, that I found. Um, I bought this on Etsy and I don't have who it was by, but, um, that's pretty much it. And I don't have the fox. Um, I'll look those up and I'll put them in the description box below. So I'll make sure and have them. Um, this last week I did do that. Um, I did put in notes. So I'm going to try to do that. I'm kind of making a, 
like a, doc, a Word document that I can move around and so I don't have to retype it all the time. Um, but anyway, okay, so whips. First up, I have, um, this is my Mirabilia uh, Deco Spirits. I am doing them all separately. Um, so I'm do, there's one for each element, air, earth, fire, water, and I'm starting with air, which is this one down here. Um, and I'm doing them all on 13 count white, no, 32 count white Eda, uh, uh, Lugana. And so here's where I've gotten to. Um, you can see there's a, I've done her, well, no, there's still, but this is her arm. Um, and then there's another part of her arm that'll be right here, this hand. I'd redone, last time I redid this hand like a whole bunch. Um, but I got more of it in um, and been enjoying that. Um, I have, so with this black, so I've used, I'm using the Etoile instead of regular 310. Uh, I like it, but anybody that stitches with 310 knows that sometimes you just, the coverage doesn't look great. And sometimes I've used three strands. Um, I tried doing that here to play around with it to see if I wanted to change it up and it just looked really bad. So it was way too chunky and it, on this I, with the Etoile I didn't want to do it so I'm leaving it in but I think even though the coverage is better than regular 310 I find most of the time the other thing is like you know you see the little like bits of white behind it well with the sparkle it kind of makes it oh it's just extra sparkle unless you really get in there close um, but yeah so that's where I got here um, and yeah um, I've been working on this one. Get, hopefully, there's some more colors that are coming in if I work over here. Um, but I was just trying to work my way out. Um, it's a lot of white, or I think I'm using B5200, but um, it's a lot of that. Uh, but I think it's coming along pretty good. So get a good look at that. Um, this is Wonder Woman by um, that I won from Brandy at Be Stitch Me. Uh, and she stays with this um, pattern. Oh, and I got my needle on there. So, um, there we go. There's that one. Now, I played around with this. Uh, I mentioned last time, I think, maybe doing like a Mirabilia Monday. I think that's going to happen. Um, and I'm probably going to, even if I'm not working on air, I may start the other ones during May so that I've got some more work um, if I, unless I want to start something different because of mania and all that. But we can talk about that a little later. Okay, next up we have Doctor Who, my Doctor Who pattern, and this is called... Nope, there's no name. Okay, um, well this is what it looks like. I was trying to get him closer. If you compare from last week, there's a lot more done. Um, he was pretty much like, I mean I had that star in, but like there was a lot down here, a lot of this pink wasn't done. Um, I filled in a whole bunch of him. Um, but he's, he's got a lot of hair, and I mean there's stuff that goes out this way, and then you know, he's got kind of a big poof up there, and then this is some um, of the different light blues uh, that I just, I worked on him Tuesday, and then, or no, I did not, I didn't work on him on the Wednesday, I worked on him Thursday, um, but not Wednesday and Tuesday. And I think Sunday, um, I was trying to get him closer to being done, but I just, it was, I wasn't going to finish or I'd have to s not start mania stuff to get him done. So I didn't want to do that. I just went ahead and put him back. Um, he is one though, if I'm, 
starting something and then I want to switch off, I may actually pull him back out this even during Mania to see if I can get him closer to finish. Because it's not that much, but it is a lot of hair. But there's not a whole lot left. I've there and but all the pinks are done. I have finished the colors. Um, this dark blue is going to come up, and then there's more over here, and there's some more white to do, um, and a few of the other lighter blues. But um, yeah, so this is um, my Doctor Who pattern, and it's the David Tennant is the. Um, was the actor that played the Tenth Doctor, and so this is seems to me it's like his silhouette from when he played that, which was a while ago. Uh, but the um, pulling up my okay, Stitches Lover Shop on Etsy is where I got it. Um, it's not one that's up there now. I don't think um, when I went to pull, it said like. Uh, and there's a lot of glare there, but, um, yeah, so that's where we're at. Um, but it's, I don't know if you could get it, uh, but I liked it, so I bought it then. Um, and this is on 16 Count Ada by, uh, Brandy at Be Stitch Me. Uh, it, the name on the tag said Almond Joy. Uh, this is one of the ones that, this is one of the first ones that I got from her. Um, and I really like it. I think it's it's kind of like the same kind of effect, um, but I think it goes well. Um, I like it. So, um, yeah, not too much more, and I'll be done with this one. And it's all... Now, oh, one more thing. So, this is also 310, the Etoile. Um, and, and it doesn't... It's better coverage on this, I think, because of the shrinking when you hand dye fabric, it um, shrinks a little bit, so maybe that kind of helps with it. Um, but I think it definitely has really good coverage, especially on a 16 or a 32 that's been dyed. Um, you're going to get some good uh, coverage there. And then otherwise, it's just the regular DMC that's called for. Okay, next we have Castles in the Air by Long Dog Samplers. This is my printout of the front. Um, this is my part. This is what I'm doing as part of the Long Dog Leap Day Sal, which is started by Aaron to Martini Stitcher, um, who is one of the people that I like watching. Uh, well, I like watching a lot of Floss Tube. But one of the ones that I, I watch a lot of her, or she's one that like comes out on Mondays usually or Tuesday and um, it's very easy to uh, put her on. She's very fun and I like her. There's uh, some stuff that she stitched that I would like to stitch, um, but uh, this was something that I wanted to do. So this is how far I got. Oh, so um, the whole thing about the sow was to start or work on a long dog um, on leap day, February 29th, and uh, the goal is to have it done by the next leap, leap day. So we have about four years to finish them. Uh, some of them are really big, you know, Death by Cross Stitch and whatnot, and uh, Templar's Prophecy, all of those are pretty big ones, um, but this one's not too bad. Um, I don't have the stitch count in front of me. But it's, um, I'm a center starter for the most part, so I did that again here. Um, now I did, I got this all the way up to here. I finished up this side and this, um, kind of moved around. Um, so I'm kind, I'm going through and doing a lot of the uh, whole stitches first and then coming back to do more of the black work or black back stitching um, to go back in and do that uh, with one thread. Um, this is on 32 count linen in the colorway Toast, also by Be Stitch Me Brandy. Uh, and then this is PR075 uh, Silks For You is the blue, um, which it always makes it look a lot brighter, a lot 
it's very, it's, these things are, the way they photograph is not the way they look in real life. Um, but it seems like more so with the silk, um, just the way it catches the light or whatnot. But um, yeah, so that's that. Um, and I'm, this is the middle page, uh, page five, I guess. Um, and I'm getting quite close to being done with all the whole stuff. Um, and so I think next month, um, or this month, I will be working on this in May, um, at least May 29th, if not more, and get further along on that. Um, so I think I'll get it done within four years. That's my goal along with the sow and um alrighty okay next up we have now we're into mania so May 1st I started working on ink circles forest of Sumatra um this is a big piece um it's also quite big um it is the second in a series of of Sumatra type patterns. The first one was Dragons of Sumatra, uh, then Circle or Forests of Sumatra, and then Squirrels of Sumatra is the third one um, that has come out. And they're all monochromatic, large pieces. Um, I'm doing mine in the Gloriana Silks, which is the called for, and it's called Sumatra. Um, it is a green, goes into, I mean, Actually, the like dark teal is more of it, and then the green is kind of smaller amount of the color, but um, this is how far I got. I also center start. Um, so, I did all of this, and then started working on this bird, and all of that is one strand. Uh, oh, so this is a 36 count linen, uh, also toast. Um, it's kind of the more burnt side of toast, if you, if you will. Um, you can see it, especially in the linen and then the Ada, you can get it, the way the dye works, it's gonna, you can get it, um, more on this side. And, um, Brandy's been very helpful when I was trying to get this because I wanted to make sure it was this way and she re-dyed the original piece, well, she re-dyed a piece and uh, sent it to me um, instead of the one that I originally got because I was wanting more of this um, darker look, uh, which is really what I wanted for this contrast. Anyway, so I did all this with one strand over two, um, and then I wasn't really happy. Um, I did a test part I, I stitched some stuff on with one strand and I liked it. So I thought, okay, well, that's great, it'll work. Um, Cause I have another piece of 36 count that I've worked on and I've used one. Well, actually I have, part of it is in two strands and part of it is in one strand, but it's cottons. And um, anyway, I thought this was gonna work, but then I wasn't super happy with it. Uh, so then I decided, okay, well, let me see what I, if I do two strands. So I did this, and then I did this. And I really like it with the two strand. Um, you can see it's a lot more chunky, but that's what I like. So um, I am going to be doing it in two, which means I'm going to have to take all this out. Um, I tried to just put, like, an extra strand over it. It doesn't quite, it's not the same effect. But... Um, I could leave it, it's not that big of a deal, but I'm gonna redo it, uh, which is kind of annoying because it's um, a lot, but I'll like it better. But I didn't wanna take it out and show you less, um, so you get to see what I had done uh, before I actually take it out. But this is um, this was my May 1st start, uh, so I got that done, uh, or started. Uh, and this one I picked. I knew I wanted to start this, um, and I did it, and anyway, I'm going to have to pick up some more silk because it's a lot more, um, I need more thread. Uh, and I think I'm going to need three more skeins. Um, so, actually, that gives me a question. So, I bought it on 123 Stitch the first time around. Um, I know my LNS doesn't normally carry Gloriana. 
um, they may be able to order it, but I don't know if anybody else carries it. Um, I asked because I looked on 123 Stitch and they're out of this color uh, at this point, but I'm sure they'll get more in at some point. Uh, but it's something I'd like to, I definitely want to get, I'd rather get sooner rather than later. Um, it's also a color I really like, so if I have extra, I'm not going to be mad about it. But is there any other place that you all have found uh, Gloriana um, able to buy or, per or order through? Um, I mean, I can probably talk to my LNS and see if that'll work, but, um, or some of the other ones on that uh, everybody talks about online. Um, um, like Fire Poppies, I've used, uh, ordered stuff um, on their website and got it sent. Uh, I may contact them too. Anyway, so does anybody know of any other place to get Gloriana Silk? Uh, specifically, the Sumatra colorway that I'm looking for. Um, okay, so then I spun my wheel of definite starts to see what I was going to do, and it landed on Mid-Century Gardens, um, which I have on there three times because it's a three-part piece. And so this is the, the middle one. This is a um, collaboration between Hands on Design, uh, Summer House, Stitchworks and Ink Circles, and there are, it's a three-part um, series where you can stitch them individually, you can do them all in one row. I'm doing them all in one row, and I'm starting with this one in the middle. Um, here, I think, yeah, so she shows you how you can do it, so this way, and I'm doing this, so I've got, I'll have this one at this end this one in the middle that I've started and then the ink circles one at the other side. Um, so uh, this is how far I am so far. Um, this is on a 32 count Joblin um, also by Be Stitch Me and the colorway Earth which is one of my favorite colors from her. It's a light blue teal with some pink undertone to it. Um, it's really great on the it looks really good on everything that I've bought it in, so I really like it. Um, this is one of my favorite colors. Uh, and I am doing my own set of colors for this. So each of the patterns has a suggested set of colors, and you could use all three. You could use one on all three of them, or you could do your own, and I'm doing my own. So this is the three col It's only three different colors, so um, this is... They're all DMC, two of them are variegated, and one is a solid. This 3765 is the solid, um, and it's the dark blue, and then I've got 4022, which is this light teal blue um, variegated that you've got here, and then this is the uh, 106, yeah, 106, that is like a carrot kind of color. So, you can see that. Um, but when I stitch something, I've been putting them on these um, kind of floss cards I make. Well, it's like a tag, a gift tag that you can buy. Uh, and then you just punch a big hole in the bottom. Um, and the way I use it is I write the number and then I will put, I'll draw the symbol in this corner so that I don't have to keep looking and look up something. It also helps when you're converting because then it's not, I'm not writing on the pattern what I'm changing it to, I'm just changing it on the card. Um, and then I know to pick that one. So that's how I do that. Um, and then I will, I, I have some just like plain white um, labels that you know you could write on. I just cover up the symbol or the number if I'm changing it out um, and reuse it with something else when I'm done with it. Um, but I have gotten to the point where I now store my DMC on those as well and I for the most part have them one skein to a, uh, a tag so I know okay that's one skein and that way I don't have to think okay this seems really big did I put two and one and a half two what did I do with these um, but that's how I do that. So that's the last one. I'm keep working on this today. Um, 
Now I have it, it's on my wheel two more times to just start the other two sides of it. So that will probably happen at some point. Um, I have decided some I'm gonna just spin, some I'm a specific day, um, and I'll get into that a little bit later with some plans. Okay, so I have haul. I have a lot of haul. So, one of the things that I got was a big order from 123 Stitch. I ordered floss, patterns, lots of things. It all came. So, we're going to start with some of... Um, I bought some fabric that I wanted to try out some different things. So, this is an 18 count Jade Ada by Picture This Plus. See, it's a light blue or light green color like that. Um, I also bought a piece of uh, Herald in 18 count Ada by Picture This Plus. That is also a nice darker green. Um, wanted to get some more greens because I don't really have a lot of green options. Um, I picked up another piece. This is a smaller piece of Phoenix 32 count Lugana. I've used this before. It's a nice red with a subtle variegation or modeling to it that I liked, um, especially for like Christmas things. Um, I also bought a piece of 25 count Ash Rose Lugana. That small piece. I'm thinking doing maybe some ornaments over one or something. Um, I just got some small cuts to see about that um, and to try them out. And then I bought two pieces of red 25 count Lugana, same kind of thing. So, um, okay, so patterns. I saw this one, I haven't ever used, I haven't ever gotten another pattern from them, but this is Cottage Garden Peacock and pomegranate and I just I saw it and I was like oh I like that it kind of has like almost a Egyptian feel to it to me I mean it's not really but like I don't know I, I liked it um, and I was like oh that would be great that looks fun um, I didn't pay attention to the stitch count when I was buying it and then when I got it I was like oh that this is a big piece. It's 287 by 146. That's a big, that's a lot. Um, so yeah, I don't know if I'm gonna start it real soon. Um, it's not gonna be a mania start, I don't think so, but I still like it and I'm still trying to figure out what I wanna put it on um, fabric wise and trying to get that set up. But yeah, this is a, um, that's a lot bigger than I thought. I was like, oh, it's not even a full sized chart it won't be that bad no this big this is a big bird um, um, which I like uh, so yeah we'll see when that comes out okay next up I bought two more Biscornu patterns from Tiny Modernist um, the Phoenix Biscornu, and then the um, Cardinal Biscornu. Um, I haven't ever done one, but they looked fun and interesting, and I um, could do them on Ada, and um, so I wanted to give them a try. Uh, I think they will be, um, I don't know, I, I just thought it'd be something fun to do and something different, um, so I wanted to pick up a couple more of those. Um, and I did. So the next pattern that I got is Blueprint for a Rainbow City by Ink Circles. Um, so this is a, a mandala type um, pattern where it's like the same thing but repeats over. It's in it's two different colors, monochromatic one and well it's two colors. So there's like a it's traded charted for a navy and then a um, rainbow color um, and the charted 
One is for Gloriana in the Navy, and then eight is Rainbow or the two. Or alternative, they give you Threadworks um, for the rainbow colored, and then a DMC 336 for the, um, the Navy. So I was looking through and I saw Threadworks, and so I picked up that one, which is the charted one. So this is 1154 uh, Bradley's Balloons is the name of it. And like, oh, well, that's you can get a pretty big skein because these are 20 yard skeins um, of you know, for not, I mean, they're pretty, it's pretty economical. I mean, it's not DMC, but it's still pretty good for like a hand dyed floss, so um, it's not a silk or anything like that. So, um, I bought this one and then I was looking through the thread works and I found another one that I wanted to do instead of doing navy. It's a Blue, um, I think it's Mediterranean. The number is 11383. I don't remember the name of it though, but it's like a Mediterranean. So I'm not sure what fabric. I wasn't sure. And I was looking through my stash and um, I pointed this out last week. This is a Somerset 40 count for doll uh, even weave from Brandy at Bestitch Me. And I don't know, what do you think? I mean, I think with the, maybe that's too much. Maybe not. I think it would look good. This is what I'm thinking, but I have no idea. I don't really have a firm plan of when I'm gonna start this. So, let's see. What do you think? Comment down below if you would. Uh, or not, um, or send me a message or comment on Instagram or whatever. But that's kind of my initial thought, but maybe not. Uh, the one thing though, well this one is all just full crosses, so I don't think it'll be a big problem. Um, I've been playing around um, with, well I haven't stitched on 40 count, so I'm not fully planning. I'm, go I'm gonna start a project on it during Mania. I haven't done it yet. so. But my thought is of doing, I wonder about doing like a, a long dog on 40 count and on the Verdal, and then you would only need one strand um, instead of two. But I'm not sure, the, the thing I don't know about is when you've got like the back black work effects as well, how they, they won't look as different. So I don't know if anybody's done that where they've done like, um, like castles in the air or something or some other um, long dog that has a combination of black work and regular stitches uh, that would you know how that works um, or things that have a lot of uh, back stitch I was messaging with um, Julie Kansas City girl in the Colorado world uh, who was talking about on her floss tube about 40 count and everything and she hadn't really done much with back st back stitch on it and um, something before I get a giant piece of it to do it I don't know if anybody else has done that or how that would work I may just play around with it when I actually start my other project with it or we'll see but um, otherwise I bought okay so I did pick up one extra skein of the Sumatra color that I uh, needed. Um, this was before I knew I needed it, but I bought an extra skein because it's like, I like that color. I'd probably use it in something else in the future if I had, you know, a project for it. So uh, the other thing, I bought a bunch of DMC variegated floss um, or color variations. Yeah, so some of the different ones. Um, I needed some for the uh, Satsuma Street uh, calendars, or there's like the nine by nine patterns um, that have different motifs in them. She uses some of the different variegated floss from DMC. And so I picked up some of the ones that I needed. Um, I also bought, this is 4022, this one, this blue, which is, I really like it. It's one in the mid-century gardens. Um, so I bought a couple extra ones of those. So 
I bought some of those. Um, and then you can also, they have some just color packs of them, of different sets. So I wanted to pick up some to get kind of a, an idea of what all they are to kind of build up my color variation stash. Um, then I ordered, um, I don't have them yet, ordered some more, a couple Nor Corbett's of the like uh, fairies that are like plant ladies. Um, and then some of the beads that went with them I ordered from Fire Poppies. Um, this is their card. Fire poppies, uh, which is very, they're very fast um, and very, so I ordered a bunch of beads. Um, I'm not going to take them out, but uh, for when those get here. Um, and then I ordered some fabric also for some of those. This is from Brandy at Be Stitch Me. So I ordered three fat quarters. And this was not on like a Friday night fight night. Well, actually it was. So two weeks ago she did a Friday night fight night in her Facebook group where she puts up some different fabrics and you and me please the ones. Um, they all go up at nine and a lot of them are gone by like nine and 10. So you gotta be pretty quick. Um, and so she generally has like two colors that she's doing and then a whole bunch of other stuff there may be random stuff from like if she did a custom order or something and some other ones that she might have um but you uh, and there's different albums of the different counts or you know ada even weave whatever you want um so i two weeks ago she did it i did not set an alarm or anything and i didn't realize what time it was and then I looked and it's like, there's not really anything left that I would want, but there was some stuff that I was planning. I was like, I need to get, order some stuff anyway. Um, so I went on her website and she has, um, it set up where you can order some of the colors that she's been doing. Um, most of them are up there now and you can just, you know, it's a drop down box, this size, this count, whatever you want. Um, and so one of them that I ordered was Gaia, which is a really, it's kind of blowing it out, but it's a really pretty, that looks way more purple, or at least it looks more purple there. It's kind of, it's got purple, teals, greens. Um, it's a light color and it, it really is, I have been calling it in my head, the like colorful neutral, um, which may sound like a oxymoron, but um, it's really more, it's really pretty pale and it definitely has variegation and modeling to it, but I think it would be great for a lot of like the Nora Corbett fairies or Mirabilia's. Um, it's just something that would go with a lot of them um, and which is what I was looking for. So. There's the new Mirabilia Princess Ileana that is out now, um, which I have ordered the chart and the bead pack from Fire Poppies. They had it set up for pre-order. Um, I'm waiting on it to come in, but I ordered that um, and I thought it, she would look great on this. And I also thought some of the other fairies would look great on this. And so, instead of trying to have, I wanted a color that I could put a bunch of them on and that way there'd be some like tying of them um, in there. Now there's still, you know, there's the Mirabilia's and Nor Corbett's. Um, Nor Corbett's are a little bit smaller. So I have two of those. One that I do want to get started soon, which is the Lady Cat. It's like an orchid um, fairy that is also going to go on this. So I ordered two fat quarters of this. Um, one will be Princess Ileana, Ileana, and then the other one I can fit two of the fairies on at least. Um, so I'm going to do Lady Cat on that um, at some point. Maybe that'll be... I'll probably do one of them for my birthday start, which is at the end of May. or. May 22nd so um, 
And then the other thing I bought is another piece of toast. This is 32 count Lugana, um, which is one of my favorite. I really like the even weaves and I've been getting into that over the Ada. I like Ada too. I still stitch on it a lot, um, especially if I want to do, if there's, I like the even weaves, especially for Mirabilia's um, or things that have fractional stitching because it's just easier to do the fractionals on the even weave than piercing the Ada to me. So, but if it's something that's full coverage or something that is, um, you know, something like that, then I'm gonna most likely do that on Ada, unless it's just giant, and then I might do it on like a 25 count Lugana or something, um, or a 32, but that's, but it's white, it's not a one that I would have done, uh, like a colored one, so. Um, this is one of my favorite, Toast is one of my favorite neutrals. Um, oh, so, yeah, this is, I really like it. Uh, you can compare this to the, well, I'll pull it out, um, to my Forest of Sumatra. You can see the difference between the two, you know, Lugana versus Linen, and also Burnt versus not, well, it might be Burnt, but Lugana just doesn't take the dye the same way. Um, and Joblin, I think, seems to come out even more, um, not muted, but like, it seems like this, the color, the modeling is less definite, uh, oftentimes on the Joblin, but that's just what I've seen. Um, but that's pretty much it. Um, I, there was a Friday night fight night last night and I did order some more fabric. So that will also be coming in. Um, I'm also, there's a couple others that I think I might order some more. I don't need to start more stuff, but I don't, I want to, so I'm gonna order stuff. So we'll see. Um, let me know if you have any ideas about 40 count and doing a pattern that has both black work, backstitch type stuff, and full crosses, and you know, versus using two threads, well, using one thread since you can't, um, because it's 40 count um, and yeah um, as far as my plans so that's the last thing that I'm going to go to um, my plan for I didn't bring it um, the next couple days is to do uh, I did okay so I'm going to finish, I'm going to keep working on my mid-century gardens for today. Um, for tomorrow on my mania, I'm going to spin my wheel and see what I get, um, which I can do here. Um, oh wait, I have more haul, I forgot. Um, I bought some stuff on Etsy and um, so one of them, if you don't know about Autumn Lane Stitchery. Uh, they have a floss tube, uh, Cassandra and Aaron. Uh, Aaron is the husband and the artist, and his wife is Cassandra, who's a stitcher. And they do, uh, they've started doing patterns in the last year. Um, and they've got some really cool ones, or maybe a little more than a year. But they have some really, really cool, interesting, different kinds of patterns. Um, I have... One other one from them, the Spring Lady that I was going to start at some point. Um, I need to get the floss for that. Um, but I have fabric picked out and everything. Aaron had a geisha that he had um, been doing, which uh, was the model stitcher was Kenny Stitches. Um, he finished it and they have framed it and they have got the pattern all finished charted everything it's available on the etsy site you can get a pdf download or you can they will mail you a hard um copy pattern but it is really pretty cool um it's called sakura um it's this geisha woman uh has a little bit i think it has like like a anime type um, aesthetic to it more than realistic uh, it looks more like that to me um, and you can see the the big 
circle in the back um, that is the sun, but it's also her parasol slash umbrella, and um, you know it's just got a lot of different layers to it. Um, it's it's really cool. So I picked that up. That came out yesterday, um, and I snatched up a PDF of it. Um, I generally I like a PDF copy. Um, well, the, I think there's pros and cons to both kinds. The downside of a PDF copy is that it's harder to show on Flosstube or, um, you know, this is what it's going to be because I don't always, a lot of Etsy stuff, Aaron has a good cover photo to it, but um, a lot of Etsy sellers don't have a cover photo of the, the, um, of a model or something they just it just has the pattern and so it's harder to print that out um, to show it off um, also I don't have a color printer so it would just be black and white if there is something um, but if I get a paper pattern one of the things that I do is I generally if it's anything big or complicated I scan it in and make it into a PDF because I use my Good notes um, on my tablet to keep track of where I am and then highlight as I go that way um, and make notes on it instead of on the pattern. Instead of making a second paper or working copy, I just scan it in and do that. Um, I also have done that on some things where there's not like everything all in one and so. You know, you've got, we, I've noticed from some Etsy sellers, some of the patterns do not have like a overlap where there's like a, you know, one set of the same column or two or three or five columns are repeated on the second page. Um, and then that's like shaded in so you know, okay, that's the same thing that's just, you're gonna have to piece it together. So one thing that I've done is, um, either in that instance or when it's just a big giant chart and I've had to copy it in, scan it in in multiple pages, is that I will then piece it together in like Microsoft Paint or something and then turn it into a PDF and use it from there. Um, mostly been successful at that, not had too many problems with it. But that way I don't have to worry about, oh, it's easier to like see it all on one because then a PDF you can zoom in, you can get you know, I don't have to worry about the size of it. Um, I can kind of look into that. Anyway, um, so that was the last one, which Aaron's has that in it. I don't have to piece it together because he already has like it all on one page. Um, and then there's also it broken into smaller pages if you want to look at it on smaller pages. So that's something um, I really like their patterns. Um, it's really easy to, to, I haven't worked on it yet, but it looks really easy to follow, and um, I'm excited to do that. They have a few others that I'm interested in doing, so I would really like to do that. Um, but I mean, I want to stitch everything, so or not everything, but I have an ever-growing list of things that I want to stitch. So that uh, I guess will bring me to plans. So I'm gonna spin the wheel for tomorrow. Uh, I think. Well. I may have it. I do not have it on my iPad. It's only on my phone, which I'm taping on, so I can't do it. Um, so I'll spin the wheel and see what I land on and figure out what I'm gonna do with that. Um, but Monday, Mirabilia Monday, I'm going to start my next Mirabilia which is Lady Justice, which is, um, you know, the, uh, Goddess of Justice, Seem, I should remember her name, uh, but it's a, um, 2018, I think, uh, pattern, um, and I'm doing her on 32 count. It's a 
also from Be Stitch Me. This is Ice Queen in Jobelin. So it's a really pretty gray. Um, this is a huge piece. I don't need all of this for her. She's going to be the top part. And then I'll have plenty for something else. Um, but yeah, I have everything and um, got everything all ready to go. So it should be, um, I'm going to go ahead and get her started on Monday. Um, cause that was, uh, she's one that I want to start and I'll start her on Monday and then we'll see what I do in the next, the week after, um, if I'll do, maybe I'll do one of the other deco spirits or if I get, um, maybe I'll start one of the other, um, Nora Corbett's that I have, uh, but who knows? Anyway, so that's pretty much it. Um, I did want to, again, thank everybody for watching. Um, if you made it this far, yay. Uh, I always, I, generally when I'm watching Floss 2, I just have it on and listen or stitch to something. So um, uh, more times than not, I'm getting to the end of other people's videos. So I appreciate it um, if you're one of those people too. Uh, but anyway, um, that's pretty much it for this week. Um, and I'll be back next week with more mania progress and everything like that. So, um, I did want to do, uh, a couple shout outs or, I mean, I think you're probably watching these people, but definitely people that I enjoy watching on floss tube. And I want to make sure that, um, if you're not aware of them, that you do go see them. So Julie, Kansas City Girl in Colorado World, um, I already talked about her before, but she's definitely one that I, I enjoy watching. Um, I've been also communicating with her about 40 count stuff and everything, but um, thank you for everything. And um, so go watch her, I'll have her link down below. Uh, also Erin, to Martini Stitcher, she's doing the Long Dog Leap Day Sal. Um, she's also doing Anna Forest Grow, which I talked about last video. Uh, I haven't started it yet. I have no idea what I'm going to do. Although I did get a comment about doing it, um, putting in a list of trees instead of doing it um, instead of the verse, which I think is a great idea. And my thought is that I'm going to do it um, with, um, I'm going to pick, make a list of different trees that either I like or that have been at like my house or at my parents' house or something, or I don't know, I'm going to go through some of that. Um, and then maybe I'll turn them into like the scientific name, like the Latin name. Um, I have a, um, which I want to make sure I did, Hoji Scott. Um, was the person that told me about that. Um, types of trees. Yeah, so I think I'm gonna look into that and figure out, rechart that maybe for the middle part instead of trying to do something else. So maybe like the name in English and then the scientific name in Latin or whatever. I mean, it's not, sometimes it's Latin, sometimes it's Greek, but um, I have my um, undergraduate degree, one of them is in classical languages so which was super helpful and that's why I went to graduate school um, but if you see this is a list of some Roman phrases in Latin um, that I have from um, as part of my wall decor I'm, I do like Roman history it was one of my favorite subjects and something at one point I thought about doing for uh, trying to be a Roman history professor but um, I did not want to do that. Uh, I still like it though, so it's one of the things I like. So that maybe that would be, maybe I'll put like in English and then in Latin um, or the scientific name for it. So that may be fun. Um, but yeah, so, but I have no idea when I'm gonna do that. Um, and uh, speaking of a forest grew, Kenny Stitches, who I mentioned earlier, who did the model stitch of the Sakura, um, commented uh, that he was also going to be doing that and had to pick out fabric. I have no idea what kind of fabric I'm going to do on it either. If I'm thinking maybe like a light tan, 
like that toast. Um, maybe, maybe something. I don't know. Um, I have no idea. So, uh, yeah. Uh, and then, okay. Joy-filled stitcher, Annie. Uh, she is, um, also a floss tuber and she is, um, doing a whole bunch of starts in mania like I am and she's doing like daily videos of everything and she's doing them live on YouTube. Um, I think she's doing them about nine o'clock, seven, I don't remember. Um, maybe seven, maybe not nine, uh, each day. Um, but you can, f I'll put her in my description box, um, a link to her channel. You can see that she did it one, she's done two, um, at this point and she is just a really um, fun uh, stitcher, and I always enjoy watching her videos. They, she always puts them up like her normal weekly wrap-ups are on Fridays, and it's just a nice thing to like have that up, and you can um, to end the week on um, or start the weekend, however you want to look at it. Um, and then the last uh, channel that I want to shout out is Steel City Stitchers. Um, which is a four for one, uh, one channel, but four floss tubers. Um, so you have Kristen, um, Erica, Jody, and Aaron, and they are all living in Pittsburgh area. And they get, uh, well, they, during all this have been doing it virtually. So you can see all four of them at once. Um, and they, um, they're young people, um, ladies that uh, there's a lot of things that they stitch that I would stitch and um, they also uh, I've really enjoyed watching them so I went back and I like watched through like a lot of their earlier videos um, they've been doing stuff for about a year more than a year I don't know um, but yeah they're they're really good um, and they've got a lot of different uh, types of stuff like Erica and Aaron stitch on Ada <laughs> Sorry. There's something that my dog has to let me know about or go stop from happening. But sorry about that. Uh, but the, um, yeah, so the Steel City Stitchers, they're great. Um, they did a like March Madness thing. And they tried to do that. Um, so they. I started to do it, um, but March got crazy and I wasn't able to finish it. But it was a great thing to start and I really enjoy watching them. I think you should check them out. So um, if there's anybody that, um, if any of you all have a floss tube, I'd really like to check that out and um, do that. So if you, um, I think that'll be pretty much it because I think my dog is going to keep barking until he can get whatever it is that's coming around the house. So anyway, um, I will see you all later and happy Stitch Mania and enjoy all that.